Antitrust Suit Surprises Ozbiz. Melbourne, Australia, the Australian music industry has reacted with surprise and exasperation to the government's filing of a federal court antitrust suit against three of the majors, the local labels, trade body and its anti-piracy unit, and seven music executives during the week ending September 3rd here. The suit, which legal sources say could take two to four years to resolve, alleges that the companies acted in breach of Australian trade legislation by preventing retailers from stocking imported CDs, claiming that they cut off local supplies to some accounts. There are also charges that the labels colluded with sister companies in Asia to block the imports, Billboard Bulletin, September 7. Australian law in this case provides for penalties of up to $10 million Australian opening parenthesis $6.4 million per offence for companies and $500,000 Australian, $320,000 per offence for individuals. A preliminary hearing was due in the federal court Monday, 18, in Sydney. Brought by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. ACCC, the action names the local affiliates of Sony Music, Universal Music, and Warner Music, the Australian Record Industry Association, ARIA, and Music. Industry Piracy Investigation Limited, MIPI, a joint venture between ARIA and local rights body the Australasian Mechanical Copyright Owners Society. Billboard has been told by sources that among the individuals named are Warner Music Finance Director Gary Smerton, Sony Music Business Affairs Director Adrian Fitzalan, former Polygram slash Universal Business Affairs Director Sue Cowan, and Paul Dixon, former Group Managing Director of Polygram's Music Operations in Australia. Also among those said to be named are Craig Handley, former GM of sales at Polygram, and Greg Makesimovic. New South Wales State Manager for Warner Music. In a statement issued September 3rd, the ACCC, citing the country's 1974 Trade Practices Act, claims that the companies have taken unlawful action in order to discourage or prevent Australian businesses from selling competitively priced parallel imports of compact discs. The body adds in the statement, Polygram, Sony, and Warner each colluded with Asian record companies to try to prevent Asian wholesalers from supplying compact discs to Australian businesses. It is alleged that Aria and MIPI assisted Sony Music to cut off these trading opportunities. The ACCC is seeking penalties against the companies and seven senior executives, findings of fact, declarations, injunctions, and orders for each company to introduce a trade practices compliance program. Universal, Sony, and ARIA immediately issued statements denying the allegations. Universal, claiming that it does not believe it has breached. The Act, says that issues relating to this matter were first raised last year, at which time the company provided certain information to the ACCC. It comes as a surprise, therefore, that almost a year later the ACCC has commenced legal proceedings. In a similar statement, Sony says it also has cooperated with the ACCC, that it is amazed by the body's course of action, and, in our view the proceedings are misconceived. We have no difficulty defending the management of our international distribution network, Sony says, and will defend vigorously the allegations made against the company and its executives. Warner referred media inquiries to ARIA. The action is the latest and most dramatic move in a 10-year struggle between the industry and the country's consumer and competition watchdog organizations over the price of seed ease. In July 98, following pressure from the Prices Surveillance Authority, saw, the government reformed its 1968 Copyright Act to relax restrictions on parallel imports of music. The industry reacted with concerns over the risk of encouraging piracy in neighboring countries, and of losing sales domestically. Prices have fallen some $3 to $5 Australian since the change in the law. Industry sources say that the next set of official market data is expected to show sales volume growing around twice as fast as revenue.
Australian labels have tried to add value to locally manufactured product by releasing it earlier and adding incentives such as bonus tracks and CD-ROM components. However, last November the Woolworth chain started selling Indonesian-made discs for less than $20 Australian, $10 less than full price. In February HMV Australia sourced discs by The Offspring, U2, and Mariah Carey from Asia, priced them at $19.95 Australian, and positioned them alongside the full price $31 Australian opening parenthesis $19.50, local equivalent. HMV Managing Director John Hazel says that consumers preferred the cheaper Asian product, and that most were not aware of the controversy over parallel imports. HMV has no immediate plans to import further. According to Hazel, but, he says, we certainly reserve the right to do so if we so desire. The retail sector expressed surprise at the ACCC's move. Jeff Harrison Chairman of the Australian Music Retailers Association. AMRA, which represents the major chains and 250 independent outlets, says. We're somewhat amazed and confused, because AMRA has had no complaints from any music retailers about bullying by record companies. And we represent 70% of the music retail market. Morgan Williams, GM of the Central Station Records chain calls the ACCC move a surprising development. He adds, we've been importing, from Europe and the US, but we've had no pressure at all from the majors. I haven't heard of any retailer who's had that pressure. Sources say that traditional discounters have come under particular scrutiny by anti-piracy agencies since the import restrictions were lifted. Others suggest that the ACCC and its chairman, Alan Fells, have come under increasing public pressure because the expected drop in CD prices has yet to be delivered. Says AMRA's Harrison, the 10 years of fighting about parallel imports left the public with the perception that the music industry was greedy, grasping, and selfish. In the last 14 months, we have slowly redressed that situation. The public still isn't convinced that $31, Australian, is the real value of the CD. Yet another court case is no help to anyone.